There is a lot of talk about endocrine disruptors in the media. But endocrine disruptors are often confused with other substances that interact with our hormonal system. What's it all about? Humans and many animals have an endocrine or hormone system. It's essential to the normal functioning of the body. We are constantly in contact with molecules that can interact with our hormone system. They are called endocrine active substances. They can be either natural, such as caffeine, soya or vitamin C, or man-made, like paracetamol, hormone replacement therapy or insulin. As they are part of our daily life, the body is equipped to interact with them. But interaction does not necessarily mean disruption. There are three kinds of possible interaction with the endocrine system. Interaction with an adverse, neutral or positive effect. So when can interaction be considered as disruption? The World Health Organization defines an endocrine disruptor as a substance whose interaction with the hormone system causes adverse health effects in an intact organism. However, the effect that a substance can have depends not only on its nature, but also on the dose, the actual exposure, and the physiological condition of the body. For example, insulin for diabetics can become harmful if it is not used correctly. It's clear that we should manage exposure to substances that can have adverse effects on the endocrine system. But our scientific understanding of how the hormonal system functions has advanced enormously, and we are learning more every day. So since it obviously doesn't make sense to ban all such substances and risk losing the benefits that many of them bring, where do we draw the line? Shouldn't science and authorities focus on regulating substances that are truly of concern? Let's have a reasonable debate.